for the good of them that love him, for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Our address, physical services, 106 9th Road, King, in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27824569264. You shall surely be blessed. May God bless you, and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to be back here tonight. And I pray that it shall be a worthy night for you and to gain something tonight. Uh, this is Abi Adenigba. I'm here tonight speaking from Shekinah Institute and continue on the topic on potential. You know, potential is so important for us. And I know that you are blessed you have the ability, you have the seed of God in you. And so tonight, I'm saying that you may have discovered some potential. You may have discovered uh, new services that you, you want to put out there or something new skill that you have studied concerning uh, a particular field. So I believe that um, the word of today will help you to prepare yourself and accelerate uh, the potential with opportunities when those spread open doors starts to manifest you also need to be prepared and that is why i've come with you today to say you need effective communication to advance your career advance your chances in the marketplace amen so i welcome you tonight and uh, let's see let's pray father i thank you tonight for the opportunity to minister to your people all over the world, and I pray that, Lord, the word of tonight shall have access into their mind, and by the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, there shall be understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, today, I continue on the subsection on the series on potential, and now we're looking at communication. Communication uh, is an exchange of information. An exchange of knowledge, impartation, through speaking, writing, um, through specific medium. For example, uh, we have telephone conversation. We have, you know, physical, verbal communication between two individuals and to a group. Again, in the age of technology, we have other means such as Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams. So those are platforms by which communication now takes place for what you want to sell out there or what um, you want to present to the world just as I present to you tonight. Now, effective communication is an essential tool and you must be aware of some psychological aware, I mean, uh, situation that you may come across. Either you are addressing an individual or a group of people in a conversation, for example. <clears throat> you may have to deal with um, character and emotional conditions. And these are part of um, factors in communication because you may come in the right frame of mind. The person you are talking to may need certain help. And so you need to have this, you know, in mind. Now, again, in, in effective communication, the choice of word, the choice of word is a factor in communication. Your word might either sell you or causes you to be rejected. And that's why we need to familiarize ourselves with effective communication. And um, I believe that you are a believer and I want to make some examples even from the word of the Lord. I saw in Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, the Lord Jesus made a point. And it says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And that strikes me because, I mean, that is teaching communication directly apart from your confession of faith 
it's also talking about communication by the use of your word in every situation. So your word is your language power to win or to lose. What is the vocabularies that you have prepared yourself for? So to draw the attention of perhaps people you are presenting to, your customers, your clients, or perhaps followers. You want to draw their attention to your gift, to your new capacity and talent. Your word becomes the tool of your assertion. Of course, with your body language, and all this reflects your confidence in presenting your skill and what you have got to serve with to the people. So in presenting your potential skill or your potential product, you need to choose your words. You need to use the appropriate language that reflects your confidence. Again, you may go to a job interviews. It involves you communicating, or in some cases, you do some conversation. So at your job interview, it's where you are selling your potential and your communication is key. And these are the soft skills that we're trying to teach people in some of our seminars, uh, like job seeker seminars that we have done in the past. Again, business opportunities and your new skill, you must learn to understand the other parties and then you still carefully choose your language, particularly in oral communication of your ideas, in oral communications or presentation of your product, of um, the, the, the service that you want to render. So a, a clear, effective communication is so essential. And this is the way that you can accelerate uh, your potential. You can accelerate your enterprise. You need to have effective and clear communication. In using the right words, again, it comes with you employing the right tone when you talk. You must employ the right tone when you deliver the content of your service, when you deliver the content of your of your the content of your of your service. So you need to understand that you, you need to employ this because and most of the time you have the right product, but you don't have the right words to describe your product. And that's why this communication is so important for you because I do not know what you are bringing out in this new year or what you have brought out already, which is a potential money spinner for you. And so you need to get this right. You must employ the right tone with your word when you talk to deliver your content of the services. And perhaps maybe you are also a preacher. Bible summons the right tone to convey your knowledge and to impart other people or the group or the congregation. It's also very important in effective communication. Now, I want to show um, you some other elements that assists, assists you in effective communication. You see, what I'm doing tonight is giving you the tools. There are a lot of other schools, other courses about communication. And I encourage you to enroll for such school to train you further. But I'm giving you insight on how you can accelerate your potential and succeed in your enterprise while you engage people. Now, there's something that I've learned also in effective communication, especially where conversation ensues. It strengthens your position. 
Now, there are th three parts in this communication analogy. There is the ethos, and there is the pathos, and the logos. Now, the ethos in communication, it has to do with the character of the speaker or the presenter. It has to do with your unique personality traits behind your speak, your talk, or your presentation. You know, that's why you find some people, the way they talk, they talk very authoritatively, but they have less effect. And then you see some other people with soft tone of voice, and yet they make impact. They are convincing. And this happens in every um, to most people who do public speaking, maybe you are a pastor or an apostle, a preacher, or evangelist even, because or you're a business person that you, you, you talk to people every time. Like myself, I am also into uh, property services that I need to describe and give people certain details, both legal and the process of investment there must be a clear presentation with the right tone of voice. But then my character, my personality might come behind my speech. And ethos is what it describes that uh, personality traits. And so you need to employ the right tone as to make impact. Now, the second one is the pathos. is another important part of communication with the other party. The pathos is when you have got to focus on the need of the other party. The pathos, um, it, it has to do with you um, having uh, the good listening here as to understand the emotional needs of the other party or of the client or the customer. And this will be useful for you if you are a counselor you must understand the path, the, the, the pathos is your ability to focus on the emotional state of the other person you are in conversation with. It includes you understanding the needs of that person, the need of that person of your services as to provide them accurately. We also use this in coaching, where you use, you listen, and then you throw back with the probing questions in order to engage the party or the client. So it is important to listen and pay attention in order to connect with the emotions of the other party. And that is the pathos aspect of communication. The last one, is the, the third one is the logos. The logos is the facts. It's the fact of your presentation, the content of what you are delivering. Like the value proposition, like your potential ideas and uh, the, the knowledge of the product that you want to supply, for example. I mean, that's the logos. You must have the full description. And this full description of your product is part of the communication. But the first two, the, 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 the ethos and the pathos, paves the way for the display of your knowledge and to give the right information. It helps the, the communication flow. So the logos is the information the value proposition, the full knowledge of the product. And that's why you have to consider and understand the earlier part of your communication. The ethos and the pathos, they open the door of the heart of the listener or the client or the customer or the group of people in your boardroom that you are presenting to. It opens your heart for your real potential content. And that is those three aspects of, of communication. It's so interesting because I just gave you that. I cannot really, it's, it's much wider than that. But for in a simple form, those are parts of effective communication. So therefore, effective communication conveys your message. 
It conveys the depth of your knowledge of the potential skill capacity that you are bringing out. Because, you know, people need to understand your words. They need to understand your words. And when they understand your words and they can hear you clearly, it increases their impression of you. And they are well informed, particularly with a good tone of your voice. It makes it clear to the other parties or to the group. Then your talk, your presentation will be appreciated by the decision makers, by the pe people that you're trying to serve. What? Word is power behind your potential. Either you are a lawyer, you are a technician, or you are a salesman. Effective communication will give you an edge. Effective communication will accelerate your potential gift and talent. So tonight, we, we're trying to have this understanding and to help you to move forward in your work, in your business, in your new discovered talent. And that's why it's a potential. You cannot sit with it, nor be timid with the potential that you have discovered. Effective communication will help you to sell yourself. Again, some people will, for example, you know, if you don't take consideration or cognizance of effective and clear communication, you will find that, that some people will switch off. They switch off after five minutes of listening to you. If they don't hear you clearly, no matter how good your product is or your preaching, they switch off after five minutes. That's why in church, some people will say amen. It doesn't mean that they hear what you have said. In fact, when you ask some people, what did I say? What did I say last Sunday? Or did, what did I say at the beginning of the summer? They, they, they probably will not understand. But then when you take your time to be clear, I know there are times that we hype, but there must be a time that you pause. There must be a time that you slow it down so that you can convey the logos mm -hmm. of your potential, of your message. I know also that people will say, oh, the, the Holy Spirit will teach us everything. I know the role of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you some instances in the scripture tonight. When it comes to communication, employing the ethos, the pathos, and the logos. Now, I know the role of the Holy Spirit for boldness. I know the role of the Holy Spirit for boldness. But you have to have the command of the scripture. You have to have the, the, the knowledge. And so it is for every other uh, uh, skills or talent and gift, you need to have the knowledge of your new skill. And then I want to refer to what I also saw in the scripture because this is the basis, this is our background, uh, this is our foundation of Shekinah Fellowship is the scripture, is the biblical word. Maybe you are not yet born again or you are not a Christian, but, but just listen to this illustration. Now, I saw in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, and I, will, and I will just read it for you and uh, please be patient and just hear what I want to say. In Acts chapter 2, that was after the Pentecost, and then the apostle, being led by Apostle Peter, went out for the first time on his own to go and preach to the people. And I will point out a few um, uh, verses due to my time. Now, in chapter 2, verse 14, I saw what it says here. It says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. 
listen carefully to what I say. And that that's somebody who is is in is in the state of control. That's somebody who is in the state of control. And you can see the way Peter make the address. Now listen to another one again in verse 22. I'm just speaking them so that you can really get what I'm saying. Then in verse 22 of Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> St. Peter said, Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as yourselves know. And that's it's also displaying a knowledge of who he's preaching about. Then I, I saw again in verse 36. Peter also continued. It says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And that is a content of knowledge plus the boldness of the Holy Ghost that gave him that effective communication to preach the sermon. And then look at what happened in verse 37. I consider that as a feedback in the communication. And it says... The people, when the people heard this, when the people heard, that means that, you know, Peter spoke with boldness and with knowledge. He said, when the people heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And this suggests for me or to me in this context of this teaching about effective communication for your potential. We saw the role of the Holy Ghost and then we can see the knowledge of Apostle Peter. So it's not just the Holy Ghost but he had the knowledge of whom he preached about. And so what am I saying here? That when you want to have effective communication, you must have knowledge of your product, of the industry you have joined. You must have the knowledge even of the company that you are representing. And it's the same thing when you go for job interviews. You must have made certain research and that gives you knowledge, that gives you content. Your skills also provide you the confidence so we can see here that knowledge of the content is very important. Again, effective communication also entails the ability to be a good listener. You must have the ability to listen in, for effective communication because communication is a two-way thing, especially in oral communication or verbal communication and other internet platform where you know you engage people not like what what I'm doing right now because you probably won't be able to speak to me but if I engage you by satellite or zoom or uh, a Microsoft teams yes of course I can hear you speak but in this case now I'm just illustrating how you can gain effective communication you must have the ability to listen to the other party then you can make impact with your potential. If you, if you speak effectively, you must also listen attentively because you will meet different people of different character and tolerance. Like I said earlier, some will give you five minutes, they don't understand, you don't cut it. But again, you have some people that will do all the talk and they won't allow you to talk. So you need to employ the strategy of coming in. But more importantly, when you are the one that you are engaging them, 
you must also give them a chance to speak. But you also need to listen carefully. Know when to make a pause in your conversation and listen. Again, for people to know that you are really listening to them, you also you must learn to repeat what they say. Repeat what they say back to them. And, and this is also important for if you are a counselor, for example, or you are a coach. There are people that will come to you with their emotional baggage and you, you need to hear them out. You need to hear them out. And as you hear people, you give the listening here, you connect with them emotionally. This is an essential skill that you need to add into this. It gives them the impression that you are listening and that you have heard them. We need to learn. You need to learn to listen. And then you can also, you know, make a note and repeat back what you have heard. And you will be appreciated. And your potential either as a pastor or as a coach or as a counselor will certainly be highly rated because you know how to connect with the people and the people know how to connect with you. You, perhaps maybe you may be um, you may be a, a political leader, for example. You know, if, if you are a politician, you know it's it's a great skill for you to have as a political leader to have the ability to listen to people, because when you listen to people, you can catch their emotional needs. You can catch their emotional needs. You must pay attention to the needs. Of your constituency and that comes with the power of listening perhaps you are a good salesman with charisma you know if you're not careful you will do all the talk to prove a point to sell what you have got to sell without listening to the other party or your client so in co effective communication we must allow the other party to speak and then we also listen, even though you are trying to sell your potential. So I hope tonight you've gained something, and um, I pray that you know it sinks into you. You've picked one or two points, and so finally um, tonight I have um, looked at what communication is, which is an exchange of information, exchange of knowledge by speaking, writing through different uh, platform, both uh, internet by internet technology. Then we look at effective communication that is a skill which entails you to be aware of certain psychological issues in the other parties, that to understand their emotional conditions, they are part of communication. To make communication effective, you must also have that, you know, ability to see into the other party. I gave examples also using the scripture, Matthew 12, 37, that the use of your word is a big factor in communication. Your word either sells you or causes you a rejection. And the Lord made an example of that. He said, for by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. You know, it, it's it's not faith confession, but it involves also in you trying to use the right word to sell your skill. Your word gives an impression how confident you are, how knowledgeable you are. So we have seen all that, and I also gave you an insight on three elements in communication or conversation. They are known as ethos. Pathos and the logos. So, and I advise you to, you know, get more information, seek more schools where, you know, specifically they have a wider note in terms of training you to in communication. So when we finish tonight by saying we must have the ability to listen to other parties. You must have the ability. So those are the things I've mentioned tonight, and that is what 
um, our foot together to use with you tonight so that you can increase your uh, level of communication uh, to, and um, to you know make yourself clear when the opportunity comes to you you are ready to present yourself you are ready to present yourself and um, and I'm sure you can accelerate your potential you know I remember the word of Paul to Timothy said be ready in season and out of season and I'm giving you this word tonight to prepare you for great and mighty things may God bless you and um, I look forward to seeing you again God bless you this has been Abe Adeniba. I've been speaking about accelerating your potential by effective communication. And um, I believe that you will gain more. Play it and share this. Um, subscribe to this channel. May God bless you. And, and then I'll connect with you next week. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Amen. This is Abi Adeniba. I'm the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry and I'd love to give you this invitation to you and your family to join us on our services. On Sunday morning at half past nine is Bible class and also at 10 a.m. is our celebration service till 12 noon. And also we stream these services from 10.30 for those of you who cannot make it to in-person service from half past 10 to 12 noon as well. And I want to just encourage you that come the way you are and I promise you, by the will of God, you will leave a different person. Also, on midweek, it's Tuesday and Tuesday, that's a live broadcast on my Facebook, at facebook.com, and that we give you a group of students which is on ministry and entrepreneurs. So please join us and you will be blessed. Our address for in-person services is 106 My number on my WhatsApp is plus 2 I look forward to receiving you and may God bless you for receiving this invitation. God bless. Amen.